At this time, we invite you to light a candle safely in your home, just as we always do in church, and we'll do it again. As we light this candle, let us remember the many miracles that we've been granted by God, by Jesus, and by others around us. Let's remember to be merciful to others when we have the chance. As Jesus taught us, I want you to show mercy, not offer sacrifices. For I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are, know they are sinners. May we let our light shine so that others can may know God's love. Good morning. Welcome to worship at St. Andrew's United Church in Hamilton. This service is for Sunday, July the 18th. I'd like to welcome any visitors that we may have with us today. We hope that you find your time with us in an enjoyable time. My name is Alan Bowden, and I'd like to thank the people of St. Andrew's for allowing me, although I'm not a minister, to fill in while we await the full-time arrival of our new minister, Debbie McMillan in August. In case of a pastoral emergency, please contact the church office and someone will get in touch with Ken McDonald who is available. I'd like to thank the Best Family for lighting the Christ candle this morning and Cindy Jeriga is our music director and has provided today's music. This year I've chosen to do a series that I call the Sisters of Christianity, Grace, Faith, and mercy. Today, we will contemplate mercy. It was philosopher Peter Kreeft who said, it is mercy, not justice or courage or heroism, that alone can defeat evil. And it was PC Cast, the author, who wrote, mercy is stronger than your sword. Today, we come together to think about mercy and its role in the foundation of our faith. Let us pray. God of sunshine and rainbows, God of mercy, as we gather here online, we thank you for our families, our friends, and for our church family. We thank you for the freedom to live our faith without fear. We thank you for our affirming church. We thank you for phase three of reopening. We ask that you will show us mercy and teach us how to be more merciful to others. Inspire us with your son, Jesus, the supreme example of mercy. Lord, fill us with your peace and remind us that Jesus is always near, showing us the way. We are in search of ways to show mercy with others, Lord. As we search, remind us that we can find your mercies at work in our lives in the safety of our community, in the wisdom that comes with age, and in the ability to reflect. Help us to find ways to support others in our community, as well as across the country, as First Nations all across the country begin scanning for unmarked graves. Let us be open to what you have to say to us today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We will now show a video of thanks from the United Church's Mission and Service Fund. It is through the Mission and Service Fund that we can show mercies to others here and abroad. Michelle Stevenson will then read today's reading. Friends, in a year unlike any other, your generosity through mission and service has been extraordinary. We will share financial results with you shortly. But first, we want to share our impact because we give to make a difference. Here are some of the lives you touch through mission and service. 2004 is when I joined this project. I was given the first loan. I had saved and I was given a loan of 2,000 shillings. I benefited a lot from that 2,000 shillings. I started a small business of selling vegetables. 
I built these two houses for renting out. I came here in summer uh, 2017 to Canada. It wasn't easy uh, for me. The whole family got involved to uh, Montreal City Mission with uh, all activities and the project they provided. And beautiful, and I'm so thankful that the person of Jesus reached into my life and invited me on this journey with him. Mission and service changes lives. It's the work we do best together as a denomination in our communities of faith and through the passion and commitment of members of all ages. En ce temps où nombre d'œuvres caritatives ont vu le revenu chuter de 40%, la générosité des membres de l'Église unie est extraordinaire. Ce n'est assurément pas facile. As you might expect, Congregational giving to mission and service decreased by about 12.5% in 2020. En tout, les dons à mission et service, y compris les dons des paroisses, les dons testamentaires, les dons d'assurance vie, les dons spéciaux et le soutien du regroupement de femmes de l'Église unie, totalisant plus de 26 millions de dollars. Communities of faith, many of which we know were struggling themselves, contributed over 17 of that $26 million. Our collective heart has never been stronger. One steady overall factor here was the special support of the United Church of Canada's Foundation's grant of $3 million, half of which was granted in 2020 as a one-time emergency fund for congregations in need. Nous avons également constaté un soutien important à la suite de nos appels d'urgence pour aider nos partenaires internationaux aux prises avec la COVID-19, ainsi que nos appels réguliers pour soutenir missions et services. And we are always deeply touched by the number of people who remember mission and service in their estates, giving the church a lasting legacy. Everyone and every gift made a difference. You made a difference. Merci. Thank you. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart is. It is clear from looking at our mission and service giving this year that we treasure our mission. Our heart is in justice. It is in discipleship. It is in compassion. Thank you for your ministry. There are many women who want to join the group because they see that I have progressed a lot. I am no longer the way I was before. I would like to thank Mission and Service of uh, United Church of Canada. Three years ago, I was just, uh, just a refugee woman who was in need and now uh, I am a coordinator of uh, so many activities uh, at Montreal City Mission. What I would say to the donors of the Mission and Service Fund is that it's worth it. The church is alive and beautiful and vibrant and it's worth investing in. Today's reading comes from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of the death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup overflows. 
Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Blessed are the merciful. Here's a twist on a joke that I delivered a couple of weeks ago. Walking through the forest, an atheist hears rustling in the bushes. Turning, he sees a mass of grizzly charging towards him. He runs as fast as he can, but trips over a stump and falls. As the bear raises a huge paw to strike, the atheist screams, God, God, help me! Time freezes. The bear becomes immobile. The forest is silent. And the river stops running. Then the atheist hears a powerful voice. You have denied my existence for years taught others I don't exist, and credited my creation to a cosmic accident. Why should I help you? It would be hypocritical to ask you to show mercy on me, the atheist agrees, but perhaps you could make the bear a Christian? At that, the noise of the forest resumes, the river runs, and the bear drops to its knees, bringing its paws together and says, Lord, for this food, for which I am about to receive, I am truly thankful. A couple of weeks ago, we discussed grace. Grace and mercy are the Christian twins who often get confused with one another. And until we study their faces intently, it can be difficult to determine which is which. Judy Palmio, a Christian blogger, best described grace and mercy as two sides of the same coin. Grace is a gift we don't deserve, while mercy is not getting the punishment we deserve. Mercy is at the heart of our faith as Christians. Simply put, mercy results from forgiveness. Today, we use mercy in several common phrases, such as mercy rule in baseball or other sports at the mercy of the court, mercy killing, and mercy me. This last one is a direct plea for mercy from God. I can't help but think of Marvin Gaye's song, Mercy, Mercy Me. This was a 70s plea for mercy for killing the planet. A couple of weeks ago, I mentioned that Jesus did not use the word grace in his sayings attributed to him. However, he liberally used the word mercy. In Luke 6.36, be merciful just as your father has been merciful. Matthew 9.13, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. And Matthew 5.7, Happy are those who are merciful to others. God will be merciful to them. This last one was part of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Perhaps one of Jesus' most straightforward directions that he gave us in reference to mercy was in the parable of the unforgiving servant. This was the parable that Jesus delivered in response to Peter's question, if my brother keeps sinning against me, how many times must I forgive him? And in reply, Jesus told the story of the servant who was forgiven a debt by a king. And then that servant went out and put another servant who owed him money in jail. The king then put the original servant in jail as retribution. And so Jesus summarized, this is how my father in heaven will treat every one of you unless you forgive your brother from your heart. Today's reading was Psalm 23, the Lord our shepherd. It is one of the most reassuring messages in the Bible for me. Even though there are many great messages in there, I gravitate to the phrase, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Goodness and mercy. While I was preparing for this week's service, I noticed that many of the Old Testament mentions of mercy referred to God's mercy towards us. In the New Testament, 
Jesus turned the messaging of mercy into something more useful and practical for humans trying to live in harmony with each other. A common theme in Jesus's quotes on mercy is that being merciful yourself is critical to receiving mercy when you need it. Sounds like the golden rule to me. Treat others as you would have them treat you. This doctrine is not unique to our Christian faith. There is a poster here near the entrance of the church that quotes the golden rule in many of the world's religions. Jesus led by example. Even in the mercy department, he healed the sick. He welcomed the stranger. He ate with tax collectors and sinners. He even pardoned those who persecuted and crucified him. Showing others mercy can be difficult, but it is critical because we all need forgiveness from time to time. In 2018, Jemmy Sudakar, a principal at the International Public School in India, wrote an excellent post on LinkedIn challenging people to be more merciful. Specifically, she had these recommendations for being more merciful. Be patient with other people's quirks. Who is that person in your life who has irritating quirks? How can you practice patience with that person this week? Help anyone around you who is hurting. Who around you is obviously hurting that you can help this week? If you can't think of anybody, then think again. Look closer. Give people a second chance. Who do you need to give a second chance to? How can you show that person mercy and compassion this week? Do good to those who hurt you. Maybe you're suffering from an old wound that you have not been able to let go of. You need to forgive and then turn it around for good. Who is that person in your life? Will you make a phone call or a visit this week? Build bridges of love to the unpopular. Who is the first person that comes to mind when you think of an outcast? Who spends their lunch breaks eating alone or doesn't seem to have any friends? What specific thing will you do this week to bridge the gap between you and that person with love? As I said earlier, mercy is at the heart of our faith as Christians. This week, I challenge you to look for opportunities to practice acts of mercy. With Jesus as our guide, I pray that we can all be more merciful. Amen.
My prayer today is inspired by a pastoral prayer by Kevin DeYoung, a senior pastor of Christ Covenant Church in Matthews, North Carolina. Let us pray. O God, the God who created the universe, the earth, all of nature and us, the God who is our good shepherd, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us. We are in the waning days of the COVID pandemic in Canada. We have lost more than 26,000 souls so far. The world has lost 4 million souls. Lord have mercy. As places begin to reopen, some cities, even some families and churches are chirping at each other over masks or no masks, reopen quickly or reopen slowly. Lord have mercy. As Christians, we are grieved to be separated from the people we love and care for. We have not been in our church building for over 16 months now. We must find ways to support our church family in unfamiliar ways. Lord, have mercy. We are saddened this month to become aware of unmarked graves at residential schools across the country. An estimated 6,000 children's deaths happened at residential schools from disease, neglect, accidents, and abuse. Lord, have mercy. The anger and fear and pain felt in the indigenous community and amongst their allies over the discovery of unmarked graves has led to vandalism and arson of churches across the country. Lord, have mercy. We have abused your creation, our home planet, Earth, to the point where climate change is starting to affect us in ways that cannot be reversed. Forest fires are destroying acres upon acres of life-breathing trees, and whole towns now, too. Tornadoes are ripping through our neighboring cities. Salinity of the oceans is starting to affect ocean currents. Ocean water levels are rising. Lord, have mercy. You have our attention, O God. Give us ears to hear. What do you want to say to us in your word? What should we do? What needs to change? How can we help? We pray for the world, our country, and our community of faith as we battle the COVID pandemic that seems to not end. We pray for guidance as churches begin reopening. We pray for our church family that all those who need care and support are able to get care and support. We pray for the survivors of the residential school system and all indigenous people who are feeling the pain of scars being ripped open. We pray for those who feel the need to lash out and destroy property as a result of this pain. We pray for the earth and the people affected by climate change, that they become inspired to rise up to the challenge of doing something positive to help. Lord, have mercy. God, let us learn Jesus' examples of how to be merciful. Let us learn to forgive as others forgive. Let us find ways to cry out our rage when injustices across our newsfeed. Let us become more loving servants and God, give us the strength to be merciful. This we pray through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. This service will be on Cable 14 on Sunday, July 25th at 11 a.m. We hope that you have enjoyed worshiping with us today. Now, as we are about to leave, may the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. 
May the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen.